Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we're going to be talking about the Ancient Anthology. This is a series by Garfield Games, and rather than talk about each game individually, what I'm going to do is talk about all of them in one video. Uh, I'll, I'll briefly explain how each one plays, starting with Raiders of Scythia, moving on to Hadrian's Wall, and then finally looking at Legacy of You. But instead of doing a, a video for each of these, I thought, well, let's just do one big anthology video, especially in preparation for the Kickstarter coming up at the end of 2023 for the release in 2024 of Ezra and Nehemiah. So first I'm going to talk about Raiders of Scythia, which is a one to four player game, plays in 60 minutes. This is a game designed by Shem Phillips and the art by Sam Phillips, which I'll go ahead and start off by saying the art in all of these games is top notch. Love it. Some of the favorite, my favorite art in any game, and that is uh, Sam, uh, Sam Phillips art. And so in Raiders of Scythia, if you have played Raiders of the North Sea, it's going to feel very familiar where you are going to be um, placing a worker and removing a worker. And when you place it, you take the action. When you remove it, you take the action. Now, the, the thematic nature of this is you are taking on the Raiders of Scythia who are tired of all the, the wealth that, that Greece and Persia and Assyria are building up. And so they're going to be going in and raiding and uh, taking uh, taking some of that wealth. And so that is what you are going to be doing. And you're going to do that by having this tableau of cards. You're going to be building up a tableau of cards, starting off with one hero. And the tableau is going to be your engine builder, where you, each of these characters is going to give you special abilities, but they're also going to be the warriors are, that you're going to use in battle. And so you're trying to build up your army and go to these different locations. But it's not this, you know, a mere thrashy game. It's still very euro -y, very uh, strategic game uh, where you are uh, you have to have a certain size army to be able to go into certain locations and then when this happens you're going to be rolling to dice to determine the wounds that your characters are going to get but there are ways to mitigate that there's ways to heal up your characters from the different cards that come out it's not just this random luck fest in fact the dice rolls are, are really you're you're just trying to mitigate you know the the damage that's that's inevitably going to happen, and sometimes you want damage to happen because it improves the, the characters that you have on your board. So again, placing a worker, removing a worker to get resources. Some of that resource is going to be silver to pay new workers. You're going to be training eagles to go into battle. You're going to be training horses to go uh, to ride into battle with. And this is a, a game that has been on my top 50 in the past because I always, I've always loved Raiders of the North Sea and actually Raiders of Scythia is my preference to play now um, between these two. What it does is it takes Raiders of the North Sea and it, and it takes elements of the expansions but also adds a little bit more and then you get this game in one package instead of having to then buy the the game and then uh, you know the the expansions along with that so raiders of scythia a lot of fun if you really like worker placement games if you like the tableau building aspect of it um, even if you even if you don't love dice rolls in um, in battles or in games in general i think you could still like this one because that's a uh, just a part of the battles but the the real crux of the game is that worker placement and kind of building up your army so that you can you can have the most strength or the, the strength that you want to have to go into the battles. And, and then, you know, bad things happen in battles. So that's where the dice rolls come in. That is Raiders of Scythia. Second we're going to talk about is the second in the series called Hadrian's Wall. Now, Hadrian's Wall is a roll and write, excuse me, this is a flip and write game uh, where you are going to be flipping over a card to determine the resources that everybody's going to get for that round. You're also going to get resources that you've built up through your engine building. But in this game, essentially, you are building up a wall to keep the the uh, picks from the north from invading England. Uh, uh, the, the Romans are, are, are doing this to keep them out of England in the uh, second century, I believe it was. And so you do that again. You flip over a card, you get your resources, and then everybody at one time, and this plays one, two, four, uh, one to six players, yeah, great solo, you know, the solo plays pretty much the same as what the, the regular game does. Uh, and it's a design by Bobby Hill and then art by 
Sam Phillips. But you're going to have all of these resources, and then you're going to be spending these resources simultaneously with everybody else to move up tracks. And you're going to be building walls, you're going to be using civilians to... Um, or civilian citizens, whatever the yellow, these little yellow meeples that are going to be going on the right board that you have, or the, the whole separate board, which is uh, really interesting because so you've got this left side of the board that is building up the wall. Um, and you are, you know, having to build these locations in order to actually build the wall. And so these things are feeding this side over here as well. And then as you put the citizens on these boards and move up these tracks, they're going to give you these blue and purple workers that you're going to be using again to build up the wall and the, and the black workers as well, all to build up the wall. But ultimately, you have these four tracks at the bottom that you're trying to move up on so that you can get victory points at the end of the game. There's other ways to get victory points. At the beginning of the round, you're going to be taking two cards and you're going to be choosing one to gain the resources and one to go into your um, slot on your board that's going to give you in-game victory points based on the conditions that you meet as you go throughout the game. So the, really, that's it. The, the, the big crux of this game is that you have a big pile of resources, and I'm trading in these resources to move up tracks, and then as I move up the tracks, they're going to give me more resources and allow me to move up on other tracks, and then I spend those. And it just it becomes this game that is so fulfilling when you can, you've got this huge pile of resources, you're trading them in and, and getting them back and, and then moving up all these tracks. And when you can, you feel so accomplished every single round of all that you do. But then at the end of the round, you're going to get invaded by the picks from the north. And hopefully you've built up your wall well enough to keep them out. This is another random card flip to see which wall they're going to be attacking. If you have enough resources there, you're going to move up on your Valor track, which is going to give you points and also unlock other things. And then it's also, if you if you don't, um, if you're not able to keep out all the picks, then it's not the end of the world either because you're, you're able to kind of, um, you're going to lose points, but you're able to mitigate that throughout the game and, and kind of build that wall back up so that you're not going to lose those points. So another game that I like quite a bit, this one it, it has such a different feel. None of these necessarily, well, especially these two, Raiders of Scythia feels very different than the other two, but this one is the only um, one where you're writing on the board as to you know having the just the resources but the resources in Hadrian's Wall are what really make the game of, of just you know again going back and forth trading all of those in. The last game we'll talk about is Legacy of You. Now in Legacy of You you are taking on the role of you who is who has uh, in, in China has been overrun, plagued with these this flooding waters that have come in from the Yellow River, and they can't figure out what to do. And so Yu's father had been working on ways to fix that, but didn't work. And so Yu is taking on, taking over his father's work, and then building these canals to divert the water. Now, the cool thing about Legacy of Yu is that this is actually a solo-only campaign game where you are going to be every game that you play building canals. And I didn't mention this, but this one is also by Shem Phillips, art by Sam Phillips. So in this game, it has a similar feel to Hadrian's Wall where you're going to be taking resources and spending those resources to, to do things, but it plays out very differently. You're going to have cards in your hand, you're going to have resources that you get in every round, and that's going to vary from round to round as you build up your engine and unlock new locations. Now, as you do that, what you're really trying to do is keep the barbarians from attacking you while you're also building up the canal. This becomes a potentially frustrating situation when all these barbarians are coming in. You're like, I just want to build my canal. I don't have time to fight off all the barbarians, but you have to because the way that you lose this game is if you get overrun by barbarians, which is are the cards at the top. If you have seven of those barbarians, which is all the slots, if all the slots are full with barbarians, then you're going to lose the game. If the flood comes and overtakes you before you're able to build up the canals as you go along, you're also going to lose the game. And then as the barbarians are attacking, they're actually going to be taking out, and, and as you're building the canal, you're going to be losing townsfolk cards. And so you're always gaining townsfolk cards, but you're going to be losing them from barbarian attacks. Um, whenever you build a canal section, you know, people 
uh, the bad things happen in in, uh, in the construction of those, and so some of your town folks people are going to go away. If you ever go to draw your town folks people and you don't have enough, then that's another way that you're going to lose this game. So it just feels like devastation is is all around you, and, and all the worst things possible are happening to you. But the neat thing about this game is that let's say you lose. Well, that's not the bad, that's not the end of the world because you're going to draw from the defeat stack of cards. Now, let me mention this real fast. You've got a, a victory stack of cards and a defeat stack of cards, seven of each. If you get seven victory cards, then you win the game, meaning you beat the game seven times. If you get seven defeat cards, you lose the game, and meaning you got defeated uh, seven times overall. But as you get these defeat cards, they're going to give you bonuses, and I, I won't give any spoilers to this because this is, is it is a uh, campaign game, not legacy game because it's fully resettable, but you are going to be um, you, you're going to be getting benefits as you lose the game. Now if you win the game, bad things are going to happen. more barbarians are going to come in, things like that, um, which is a little bit of a spoiler, but not really because just know that all the bad things that can happen will happen the more you win this game. but it just feels like all this, it's just like this mitigation of all the bad stuff that's going on around you while you're still just trying to focus on building up the canal before it gets flooded, before you get overrun, or before you lose all your town folks. This game is, as, as well as the others, is fantastic. Um, I, I've really enjoyed my plays of this. I've played a lot more solo games. If you're not a solo player, this is one that you're probably not going to be that interested in. Um, and... If you are a solo gamer, uh, Hadrian's Wall and Legacy of You are really both great solo games. Raiders of Scythia is is a lot of fun too, but I prefer to play it with other people. Whereas the other ones I could play, um, you know, by myself and be completely satisfied with that. Um, but with Legacy of You, there's just so many cool elements of the story that come up throughout the game, and sometimes it's within the game, sometimes it's after the game, but it's it's all really cool things that are happening. Um, but it's all damage control while also trying to build the canal. So let me talk about you know some of some of my thoughts on all of these. I, I gave those as we went along, but some of you might know if you keep up with the channel. Whenever we do our top fifty games, Raiders of Scythia has been in my top fifty. I'm not sure where it fell this last year. It's possible it wasn't quite in that top fifty, but it's in my top hundred uh, for sure. A game that I've loved for quite a long time. Now, I've only recently, as in the last six months, played Hadrian's Wall and Legacy of You, which Legacy of You is a, is a new release. But since I've played these all three of these games quite a bit now, I would say Raiders of Scythia out of these three might even be my least favorite, even though it made my top 50 in years past. So this is a series that I absolutely love. I just think it is so fantastic. And I, I recognize that I really enjoy the gameplay of all these games, but I know that they're not all going to be for everybody. Some people might not like the dice rolls in Raiders of Scythia, or if you have Raiders of the North Sea, you might think, I don't really need Raiders of Scythia, and you might be correct. I like it because I like the artwork better. I like some of the changes and having everything in this smaller, compact box. You might not like the complexity of Hadrian's Wall. I didn't mention this, but Hadrian's Wall is a very complex game. And uh, there's a lot of moving parts in this, moving up this track and, and making sure I keep up with all the resources that I'm getting. You might not like that aspect of the game. And you might not like solo games at all in, in Legacy of You. And so not that all of these games are going to fill everybody's, um, you know, everybody's desires in, in gaming, but for me, they really do. I'm so excited to see what ne Ezra and Nehemiah are going are gonna to look like. Um, that, well, I know what they look like because it's going to be using the same Sam Phillips artwork on that one, but to see how the gameplay works. I really didn't know much about Hadrian's Wall or Legacy of You when I got into them, but wow, 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 I'm so excited uh, that I was able to, to play these. Now, where do I rank these is the question now. So if Raiders of Scythia is my least favorite in a game that I still absolutely love, I think I gave this one an 8.5 or 9, something like that, whenever I reviewed it. Um, so where does that leave Hadrian's Wall and Legacy of You? Now, they're different, and this is where I kind of struggle because I don't know certain situations I would want to play certain games. For example, if I'm playing a game with my wife or a friend, I don't have an option. I've got to play Hadrian's Wall. Legacy of You is solo only. 
and I really enjoy the 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 moving pieces in Hadrian's Wall. It's just such a cool puzzle, and there's so many different areas to explore. I love that as well. But I think I might give the nod to Legacy of You. Now, maybe that's because it's the new hotness. It's I've been getting a lot of plays of this lately. I've played all of these recently, but but Legacy of You, since it is new, I've been getting more plays of it. That's possible. Maybe once I play through the campaign, I might not be as excited to play it. Although it's fully resettable and you're not going to have all the pieces come out in every campaign. And so every time you play the campaign, it's going to look differently. It's going to play out differently. And you're going to discover new cards and new storylines, all of that. So I, I don't imagine that's going to fall anytime soon. So at this very moment, I think I would put Raiders of Scythia at 3, I would put Hadrian's Wall at 2, and I would put Legacy of You as my favorite of these. Although, ask me again next year, and all of that could be flip-flopped completely upside down. Um, but my guess is that Hadrian's Wall would, would if anything moved, it would, might move up to 1. Uh, but Raiders of Scythia is still at 3, even though, again, I still love this game so much. So, anyway, those are my thoughts. Hopefully that helps you if you're interested in these. Again, know that if you have played any of these and you like it or don't like it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like or not like the other ones because they do play out differently. But for some reason, they just have grabbed me and I've really enjoyed how all of them do play. So those are my thoughts on the Ancient Anthology. Thanks for coming down to Meeple Town. Thanks for joining us and thanks to our Patreon supporters for making content like this possible. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash meepletown. To follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, find us at Meepletown Games. Finally, to connect with us and other residents of Meepletown, you can join Guild 3407 at BoardGameGeek.com. Until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.